Hello and welcome to this Microtasker Shorts video. In this video we're going to be building the Microtasker Serial Loader using KDS and as target we'll be using the Freedom K66F board. We start with the Microtasker project opened in KDS. If you need help downloading the Microtasker project or importing it into KDS there is another video explaining this, the link to which will be below. On the left here we see the folders in the Microtasker project. The ones which interest us are the applications. There are three applications inherent in the Microtasker project. This is the main application, this is the bare minimum boot and this is the Microtasker serial loader. This is the one which interests us today. I start with the configuration file. We want to build for the Freedom K66 board so what I need to do is to select this that has selected it as the target board. Now I'll search for this file or rather the name so that we can see what uh, this provokes. Here we find the main define which defines a few parameters of the processor itself. For example, it has a maximum frequency of 180 megahertz. It has an FPU and is based on the K66. When we use the USB interface, we define here that we're going to be using the high speed interface, which is available on this board. See only uh, target defining this board. However, we need to configure the serial loader so what I'm doing is I'm configuring this to have a serial interface with the serial interface enabled the loading as standard is the S record loading as long as I don't remove it I can also optionally add Intel hex loading now this means that I can load then either S record or Intel hex and it will automatically detect and perform the download as required. The other thing in the project which we would like today is to have an SD card for loading so I make sure that the SD card support is enabled which is this one here. The option that I have for this is also to automatically delete the uploaded file after it has been successfully copied. I'm not going to enable this today. This completes the main configuration and now I'm going to go into the application hardware kinesis file and again I'm going to be looking for the freedom configuration, the freedom board configuration for the K66 and uh, I'm going to be using an external crystal of 12 megahertz now this is going to be divided down by 1 to keep it within the input range between 8 and 16 megahertz and then we're going to be multiplying it by 20 that will give us a 240 megahertz uh, voltage controlled oscillator which is twice the frequency of the core clock so the core clock will be 120 megahertz by setting the bus, flex and flash clock dividers I can achieve 60 megahertz bus and uh, 24 megahertz flash these are the maximum values which obviously must not be exceeded the reason why I'm not using high speed run mode for the, for the serial loader which would allow me to um, work up to 180 megahertz is that it does have some restrictions uh, in particular you cannot program the flash at this speed which means that it wouldn't be very useful for the serial loader. Continuing we find that we can activate any mask errata for this chip. Uh, we have a 144 pin housing on this board it's map BGA. These are only useful for the simulation but important is that we also specify the amount of flash and RAM which is available. Continuing 
here we find the UART port configuration we're going to be using on UART 0 which is the one connected to the open SDA VCOM on the Freedom Board. We're also specifying that the pin mapping is to port B so that it also matches with the circuit. And finally we have the major port configuration for the Freedom K66 board where the LEDs are specified, the switch connections are specified and uh, very importantly for the operation of the bootloader we define which inputs are going to force the bootloader operation. If these are not available and there is an application in the flash it will automatically jump to that with no delay. However if I hold down switch 2 on the board or the SD card is inserted then the bootloader will be automatically activated. We have a second define which is interesting that's the retain loader mode. If the SD card starts the bootloader mode uh, it will be checked if there's no code to load then the decision as to staying in the bootloader mode or jumping in the application is made by the state of the switch 2 on the board. That means that if I hold switch 2 down for long enough then it will stay in the serial loader indefinitely which will then allow me to use the serial port if needed. The rest of the configuration here is specific to the SD card controller and uh, all of the setup here is basically standard which means that new users only really need to set up the device type in the configuration folder as we can see here there are a lot of boards supported the rest of it will be fairly automated so there shouldn't be a lot of work to do however I recommend just doing a search of the project for the board just to find any specific defines if you have your own new board it's quite simple then to add a new board here and uh, pretty much copy over the closest one available and then make a few adjustments so that uh, you have a, a specific project. So now we can move our attention to building the project. I make sure that the microtask is serial loader is selected as target as opposed to the application or the bare minimum loader. But before I actually execute this I'm going to be checking the properties of the project to make sure that they match the process that we're going to be using. So I go into the settings file and I verify that we have a Cortex M4 rather than for example the Cortex M0 Plus which some of the smaller Kinetis parts will have. And in the linker setting I verify that I have the correct linker script file. Now the K66 has 2 megabytes of flash and 256 kilobytes so that means that I can select this linker strip file. So that's the settings which are required. I can save this and then we can build. Here we see that the build has now terminated and we have a serial loader which is about 18 uh, kilobytes in size. The application will be starting at 32 kilobytes in this example case. So now I've connected my Freedom board which appears as a hard drive and uh, the simplest way of programming to this board is in fact taking the binary which has been generated which can be found here and simply dragging and dropping that onto the hard disk which appears from the board. Now I take a terminal emulator, I'm using TerraTerm and uh, we'll let the board start. At the moment the board has no SD card connected so we're going to see what happens. It's also got no application loaded 
I'm starting it now. As we can see here, the checking of the SD card gave up because it's not available. This gives me some simple commands, for example, to check whether we have um, code. We have no code. And uh, what I could do is also to download an application. So if I go into the loader mode, it's waiting for me to either copy an S record or an Intel hex file. Now I do have a uh, example application ready, which I built earlier. And uh, the output of the Microtask uh, application uh, automatically generates uh, S records or hex formats. So in fact I can choose any of these. So let's choose the S record one. I'm just going to drag and drop it onto TerraTerm, start sending the file. And here we can see the download in action via the UART. This is at 115 kilobits per second, not extremely fast, but now we have an application in operation. I'm going to insert the SD card just to check that the application detects that as well. It's detected it, mounted it. So if I go into menu 8, which is the UTFAT disk interface, I have a number of commands including a DIR, so there I can look at the files which are presently on the card. Now what I also did earlier was added a file called software.bin. This is in fact the same application that's running, but it's on the uh, disk. So what I'll do now is make a reset of the card and we're going to watch what happens. If we remember earlier, we said that if there's an SD card in the socket, the serial loader will actually boot up always into that mode to check what's on the disk. So let's see it happening. Here we see that it detected the SD card. It checked the file's content and it said, well, I've already got that file loaded. And then it jumped to the application. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold down switch 2, restart. I'm just going to hold keep switch 2 down and that's going to stop it jumping into the application. Now that gives me the possibility to do a blank check. Now obviously the, the flash will not be deleted now because we have an application in place. So I can do a delete code. Yes, let's delete that code. Now it should be blank, which it is. I'm going to do a reset. This time the SD card was the rather the firmware on the SD card which was recognized as being valid was uploaded and again we have the same application in place. Now what we've seen is how to build the project after configuring for what we require and also the serial loader operation taking place. In this particular instance we enabled a loader on the serial interface which allows both Intel hex and Motorola S record loading and at the same time we enabled also SD card loading. Now we're going to quickly look at how do we program this onto the board if we want to do it all in KDS. Now in KDS the output which is generated is placed into this folder here which was also generated during the build. Now here we have a file called Microtask Serial Loader .elf. Now that's the file which contains all of the debug information and also the binary which is generated and we can use that to program to the board and also to debug. I'll show you how I do this. There are probably lots of different methods to do it in KDS but this is the one which I like because I can quite easily see exactly what I'm doing then. I choose debug as debug configurations. Now what I have on the Freedom K66F board is a JLink open SDA binary. Now that means that I have to use the Sega JLink debugger. I already have a configuration which uh, will, can be worked with the main projects. 
but if I double click on this I now have one automatically generated which I can use for debugging the serial loader project. I just do a couple of checks here. First of all I check that it's using the correct L file which it is and I go into the debugger configuration. Now here we have a device name called K64 which is of course not exactly the chip we have so what I can do is uh, modify this to match the device which we have which I hope is right. If it's not right you can go onto the web and you get a list of the names which uh, are correct. Let's do an apply it hasn't uh, complained about anything so let's see whether we can debug this is nothing to be worried about it's just a warning other than that it looks to have worked it's programmed our serial loader to the board and the program counter is pretty much at the first line of code Let's put up the output so we can see that it uh, starts and I'm going to run and in fact I've got a confirmation that it worked so let's try debugging it now what's happened here is that I've jumped into the application so and it's not the application we want to load so to stay in the bootloader I'm going to just restart I've paused it, I've commanding a reset of the debugger now this time I'm going to hold my finger on switch 2 so that when we run it doesn't jump into the application here we can see again and uh, just to be clear on this I'm going to do a delete code which means that it won't ever jump to the application at the moment and I'm also going to remove the SD card if I pause the debugger, there we can see that we are in the microtask operating signal uh, system and it's pretty much jumping around a loop because it doesn't know what to do, it hasn't got anything to do at the moment. So just to get an idea of debugging in this environment, we're going to be looking at the SD card task itself. So this is called the disk loader. So let's put a breakpoint on a part of the code. Now this is a timer event which uh, tells it to check whether the card is ready. So let's put a breakpoint on this line here. I have to go back to the debug perspective. I do a reset and let's let it run. And there uh, we've hit the breakpoint. So what it's going to do is going to be looking at the the disk information to see whether the SD card task has mounted the disk in the meantime. Uh, looking at the flags here, this means in fact that there's no card inserted, which is the case at the moment. So obviously it's going to just display that we've got nothing happening at the moment and uh, it will come back and hit this after a, a little bit more time normally there we are, two, it does it about three or four times and then it would give up there we are, it's given up that completes the demonstration for today I hope that you enjoyed watching and also learned important points so that you can also quickly, efficiently benefit from the Microtask Serial Loader in your project